I love to make fried rice and I thought I would put together my favorite like three nationalities fried rices. Here we go guys, Thai, Chinese and Japanese. Sometimes the simplest things really are the most joyous. This fried rice is made with some humble ingredients, but with a little bit of technique, we are gonna make it epic. This is my Thai railway, I'll tell you about that later, fried rice. So story has it, this fried rice was served and sold on the railways of Thailand uh, and probably still is. Uh, but the point is, I think in that kind of environment had to be sort of simple ingredients and quite cheap ingredients as well. So this one is budget friendly and very simple everyday ingredients, but I'm going to show you how to get the best out of them. So let's get started first of all with the tomato. Now I know not everyone would think of tomato as a fried rice or a stir fry kind of vegetable or fruit. Technically it's a fruit I think, but um, in Thailand we often use tomato in our fried rice and I really like it. So what you want are some nice little wedges. And the cool thing about the tomato is it's actually adding that kind of umami savouriness. I know you guys hear me talk about that all the time, but tomatoes have a natural amount of glutamates that add that extra savoury flavour. So there is method to the madness here. Now the other thing I'm going to do is get some eggs prepped. I really like an eggy fried rice. I'm into that. So I'm going to go with three eggs. Now you want to get your wok or your pan really hot here. So earlier I was talking about how we're going to use a bit of technique to get the very best out of our simple ingredients. So very, very hot is the first thing. Like I want to be able to make this like scary hot. We should be able to, you know, see a little smoke happening. Once that happens, then we can add in our oil. Now in with the garlic. So with the garlic, chop it nice and rough so it doesn't burn the second it hits the oil. Another little tip there and some onion. Now the reason you want to get that pan so hot is that, you know how like in the movies or you know when you're watching a fancy chef documentary or something uh, on Netflix, you see you know the wok happening really fast and there's fire and you know everything's happening so quickly but they're actually in a restaurant with a really high sort of powerful burner underneath. At home, it's just not the same. So you really kind of do need to adjust a little bit your cooking method. Um, it's not the movies. <laughs> So I like to give the ingredients a lot of time with the heat so that we get a little bit, a bit of that like smoky chariness, which you want uh, for a fried rice. Oh, I love the smell of onion and garlic in a wok. Simple things make me so happy. So the onion's just starting to soften. I'm going to get my tomatoes in there. And what I want here is again to leave the tomatoes to get a little bit of that kind of cooked sort of thing happening, getting into the heat. And that way we're getting more of the flavour developing. So leave them in there till they soften up a little bit. You can give them a toss every now and then. Okay, tomatoes looking a little softer, broken down a little bit, so now I'm going to add in my cabbage. I did say very simple ingredients here, humble ingredients. You could use cabbage, you could use some Chinese broccoli, you could use regular broccoli, whatever you like. Now just toss that around until you just kind of see that green colour pop. I don't want the cabbage to get too wilty. Now I'm going to go on with my rice. So let's talk about rice for a little bit. Uh, this is rice that I made yesterday. If you want to watch a video on exactly how to make the perfect rice for fried rice, I have one of those on my channel for you, so get in there. Uh, but basically you want the rice to be really nice and dry, not gluggy, slightly undercooked. So, and that means we're just going to get a better texture for the fried rice. Okay, so that goes in. Now I want to go in with some fish sauce, of course, because we're talking Thai fried rice here. And now some regular light soy sauce. Light soy sauce just being, uh, you know, your everyday Chinese soy sauce. And now the dark soy sauce. So this is like the key characteristic to this railway fried rice. It's the colour and that little bit of sweetness. Oh, I love this part where the rice gets all like coated and basically just turns into something really burnished and beautiful. You want to make sure that each grain gets its share of that kind of seasoning love. 
Now another little secret ingredient here and this one comes directly from my mum and that is a little sprinkling of sugar. So we're not making things sweet here, we're just adding another little element that's going to help to like caramelise and get that kind of deep, uh, almost smoky flavour in the wok. Now this is looking good, what I need to do now is do my eggs. So sort of push everything to the side and you want to add in a little bit more oil on this empty side and then in go the eggs. Now what I do here is kind of like tilt the pan a little bit so more of the egg part is on the heat and then just kind of push them around, bully them around a little in the pan there and get them starting to set. Okay, so once that egg is looking sort of like almost set, I kind of get in there and start flipping it over. And I like to keep my egg kind of chunky, I like to see the bits of egg in there. So I'm just going to leave it like that and then just start tossing everything together. Okay, by now things should be smelling incredibly beautiful and fried ricey. Is that even a smell? I'm sure that's a smell. There is definitely a specific fried rice smell. Now another little key kind of secret ingredient, well if you're Thai it's not so secret, but um, white pepper. We love to put a lot of white pepper on our fried rice, so go in there with a really decent pinch. It just kind of has a more um, delicate aroma, pepper kind of aroma and flavour than black pepper. And now for some final like pop of freshness, I want some coriander and spring onion. Now just sprinkle most of that on top, I'm going to leave a little bit for some garnish at the end. Oh, now this is the kind of fried rice my mum would love. Quite old school with the tomato and the simple ingredients, oh, so good. Okay, let's get this out. Now the other thing with Thai fried rice is that for me it's the final little bits of zhuzhing that really make everything pop and amazing. So you got to get some prik nam bla, this is what we call prik nam bla and it is some very spicy chilies, uh, some fish sauce, you can optionally put a little squeeze of lime or lemon, I like to put a little squeeze in there. And then we always have cucumber because the cucumber kind of cools down the palate as you're eating your fried rice and depending on how much chilli you're putting on there, obviously in between the spicy mouthfuls. Now I like to have a bit of a decorative uh, cucumber for this one, I mean, you know, we're talking old school here so I like to get the, you know, julienne peeler out and have nice little sort of edges. And then a little lemon or lime wedge and a final little sprinkling of some greenery. And there you go guys, a very old school style of fried rice, Thai railway fried rice. Let's get in here and see how we've gone. I want a squeeze of that lemon. I want a very generous amount of that chilli, you know me. Mm, that smell. This has all the things, so you get the, <clears throat> wow, that chilli is punchy. You get the chilli, you get the tangy lemon, and then you get that like savoury fried rice and the egg and the tomato, mm. and just a little hint of the pepper. That is technically perfect and just delicious, yum. Restaurant style Chinese fried rice. So it's a simple dish, but there are a few little techniques that you need to get it extra special. So we're going to start off with our sauce for the fried rice first and I just want some soy sauce. Try to go for a Chinese light soy sauce for this one. That will give you just the right amount of saltiness and colour that we're looking for. And I want some Chinese Shao Sing Wai. Now this is an optional ingredient for this dish but I really love the fragrance and aroma it lends to the fried rice. And then I'm also going to add some sugar that's going to help with some sweetness but it's also going to help us caramelise and get some nice charry bits on our rice. Now I'm choosing to add some Chinese char siu barbecue pork to my fried rice. I love the kind of sweet savoury porkiness it lends to a Chinese style fried rice. But you could choose to keep this meat free or you could just use chicken or shrimp or anything you like. Now I'm using my homemade Chinese barbecue pork for this one and if you'd like the recipe you can head to my YouTube channel, you'll find it there. But you could use store-bought Chinese barbecue pork or you can even use Chinese sausage as well, that's another really good one to add to this dish. Mm. 
So the key thing for any stir fry is to get everything ready before you start cooking. So I need to get my eggs whisked. Now I've got everything else set up here. I've got my soy sauce mixture, sesame oil, my egg, my garlic, onion, pork, and my salt and pepper. So all set to go. And I want a decent amount of oil in my wok. And I've got some garlic here and it's quite chunky. What I want to do is infuse that oil with the garlic and get it to start turning sort of crispy at the edges all in the detail when it comes to getting this rice absolutely perfect. And this little extra step of cooking that garlic so it's crispy and golden and making that garlic oil at the beginning, this is really gonna make a big difference. Now timing is everything. I don't wanna burn my garlic, so I wanna get my onions in as soon as I start to see some color. Okay, so at this point I've got garlic that's beautifully golden and dark brown. I've got onion that's just tender. So now I want to go in with my pork. Okay, now move everything over to the side. We want to make some room for our egg. So just tilt the wok a little bit so that the oil comes down to the bottom and then in goes the egg. So just push that egg around, swirl the pan a little bit. And this is another key part of getting that restaurant style fried rice because we don't want a scrambled egg. We actually want an omelet that we're going to then break up into recognizable little pieces. Yep, there we go. Flip that over. Now start to chop that up and incorporate it with everything else. Okay, now for our rice. Now this is some rice that I did make yesterday. I also have a video on how to make the perfect rice for fried rice, so don't miss out on that one over on my YouTube channel as well. And I just want to get this rice starting to get coated in that nice oil, get it making friends with that egg and that pork. And now for that soy sauce mixture. So at this point, your rice grains should be beautifully coated in the oil and the sauce shouldn't be anything sticking together or clumping. Oh, and the smell of that Chinese wine just makes this all the more special. And finally, we want just a little bit of salt, some chopped spring onion, and some sesame oil. Now, I'm gonna turn that heat straight off because the sesame oil will lose its fragrance if you heat it up too much. Oh, and that beautiful sesame toasty smell is just making me really hungry to be honest. <laughs> mm. So just adding that sesame oil at the end means that you're getting that really lovely smokiness that you would get from a Chinese restaurant fried rice even if you don't have um, a seasoned wok. And then finally just a little bit of white pepper and I love the white pepper because to me pepper in a fried rice should be heard and not seen. So it will add a little bit of peppery bite without much harsh color or flavor and that my friends is one epic restaurant style Chinese fried rice mm. smoky savory porky doesn't get better than that Japanese style garlic fried rice. This one is buttery and very special because I have a little secret ingredient that you would never guess. This is my Japanese garlic fried rice. So this is unlike any other fried rice that I've done on my channel and I do a lot of fried rice as you guys know, but typically mainly Thai style and Chinese style fried rice. This is a Japanese style and I have a very odd but very well, pretty much like game-changing ingredient here that I'm gonna be using a little bit later on. We'll get to that part in a minute. First up though, so important here, 
how do we cook the perfect Japanese rice? And for me, because I didn't grow up eating Japanese rice or cooking Japanese rice, I grew up eating and cooking Thai jasmine rice. You know, I've had to work on perfecting my skills at making Japanese rice. So I'm gonna share all those little tips and tricks with you guys so you don't have to go through the pain that I did of all the bad Japanese rice that I cooked. All right, so let's start off with the pre-preparation to the rice. Now, I've had this Japanese short grain rice soaking in some water for about 30 minutes. Oh, before I did that, I washed the rice. So I washed the rice under the tap, then I poured some extra water on top and I've had it soaking. That's really important. I skipped that step once and it did not go well. The rice grains were totally unevenly cooked and everything just didn't work out. Soak the rice. Now, you wanna drain the rice. Now you wanna keep shaking and just kind of agitating that sieve until you stop getting any drips of water down the bottom. This just means that you've got control over the amount of water that you're adding to the rice in the pot. So you'd be surprised at how much water comes out from this little jigging about. Now, transfer that rice into a pot. Now we wanna add some water. And how much water do we add? Well, this is where it gets a little bit confusing, I think. So rice itself only needs an equal amount of water to cook. But of course, rice isn't cooking in a vacuum and some of that water is evaporating off. So you only need just a little bit extra. So this is like two cups of rice, two cups of water and just a quarter cup of water extra. So if you're going to be doubling the quantity of rice, you still only need four cups of rice, four cups of water and a quarter cup. You don't double that extra quarter cup. Doesn't matter how much rice you're doing, just an extra quarter cup is all you need. Trust me. <laughs> all right, so add in the water. Turn the heat on, put the lid on. Tight fitting lid is essential here. And then once you can hear the pot bubbling, that's when you wanna start your timer. So just wait a few minutes here. So I can hear that my pot has started bubbling away in there. So I really don't wanna open the lid off and let all the heat out. So I'm just gonna have a quick look just to show you guys. Okay, yep, it's boiling. Now I'm gonna turn the heat down. So about a medium low heat, cause I don't want the rice on the bottom to burn. Now start your timer, 10 minutes. So at this point, our rice should be cooked and dry. Let's have a look. Again, I don't wanna lift the lid up. And if you're at home, what I would suggest is not lifting it, but I'm just gonna show you guys really quickly water i can't see any water so that's good what i'm going to do is actually take this off the heat now but leave the lid on and i want to leave that for another 10 minutes because the steam that's trapped inside there is going to continue kind of evenly and gently cooking the rice all the way through that's right my friends a little bit of patience is needed okay so now we should be looking at some seriously perfectly cooked rice fingers crossed now look at that looks beautifully dry and then i've got a little large wooden spoon here that I'm going to use to fluff this up. Beautifully fluffy, not soggy at all. Just right, let me just try. Mm. Just really nice tender grains, not mushy, great. Okay, now I've made too much rice here, which is generally what I do. I, I do that even with my Thai rice because I like to have two days or three days worth of rice in my fridge always. It's an Asian thing, I think. Um, okay, so I just want about three cupfuls of rice here. Now, while the rice is still warm, this is when I'm gonna add my little secret ingredient. So while I was looking online for the perfect Japanese fried rice, I always like to do some research before I get in front of the camera for you guys. Um, and I came across a blog called Chopstick Chronicles, and she had the most amazing addition, which I just think is genius, and that is add some mayonnaise. So I've got some Kewpie mayonnaise, which is Japanese mayonnaise, and I love this stuff. So I was like, yes, need to try this out. And I did, and it was fabulous. So that's why we're doing it today. So add your mayonnaise into the rice. You don't even notice the mayonnaise flavor at the end. It just kind of adds an extra, like savory, slightly tangy, slightly sweet kind of flavor. It's really good. And now just mix that through the warm rice. To me, it's got to be that Japanese style Kewpie mayonnaise because you don't want a really sweet, you know, kind of mayonnaise in here. Unless you like a sweet fried rice, but it's not for me. 
Now you can see just how fluffy and lovely that rice is when I'm mixing that mayonnaise through. Mm, perfect. All right, so now we are beautifully prepared uh, and actually the preparation takes a lot longer than the actual cooking time. Okay, so before we get into the pan, we're gonna just crack our eggs. And now I think I did mention at the beginning of this video that this is a really buttery, garlicky kind of fried rice. So of course we need some butter. Just as that butter is foaming, I'm gonna add in my garlic. Mm, I love that smell. The smell of buttery garlic really is one of those joyful things. Now, I don't want the heat up too high here, guys. I really just want that garlic to soften. I don't want the butter to color too much. Just when we get a nice, gentle, foaming sizzle, I'm gonna add in my rice. Okay, quick toss around. Now I'm gonna add in my soy sauce. Now keep mixing that through until you've got an even colored palette of rice grains. Now push everything to the side and let's do our eggs. Now I'm using a non-stick pan here so I don't have to add any extra butter or oil but you might need to if you're not using a non-stick. I just like to move the egg around a little bit and then spread it out and then kind of roughly sort of scrape and flip it over. Now just break that egg up and toss it through. a little bit of greenery and some flavour. I'm going to add in some parsley. And now let me check for some seasoning here. Mmm. Mmm buttery, garlicky rice. Oh, that is so good. And that little tiny touch of mayonnaise, mm, God, it just gives it an extra something. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt though, because even though we added the soy sauce, we didn't add very much, and I don't wanna kind of darken the color anymore, but I do want a little bit more seasoning. Now that is looking great. Now this makes the perfect friends with things like teriyaki chicken, teriyaki salmon, grilled prawns, just about anything really. And look at how beautifully separate and fluffy those rice grains are. Oh, wow, amazing. steaming bowl of fried rice. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not Thai fried rice, which I grew up eating, but wow. Mm. Mm. It's just something about a beautiful steaming bowl of fried rice. It gets me every time. Mm. And there's butter. Butter makes everything better. And mayonnaise. You've got to try the mayonnaise thing, guys. It's so good. It's almost like the mayonnaise coats each of the grains in just a slight amount of flavor. Kind of helps keep them all separate too. Mm. Thank you, Chopstick Chronicles. Such a great little tip. Mm, yum.